people don't understand, like I mentioned, when you arouse yourself with these things, you're opening yourself up to a whole nother world that people don't understand. And as you mentioned, the people, the musicians playing with the Ouija board, people don't know what these people are doing behind the scenes. There's a reason these, these, uh, these women and these people are screaming in the crowd for them. They're utilizing, many people are utilizing the assistance of the jinn to assist them in their performances and everything. People don't realize these things. This is a whole nother reality, especially many of the Muslims are very ignorant towards this fact. They don't understand that this is a whole nother element. It's just not something that's, you know, friendly and things like this. No, you are inviting these things into your home on a deeper level. You know, you're inviting these things to your home and everything. So when you're talking about the jinn and these things like this, I'll give an example from a personal experience. Eddie, I can tell you that when I was a non-Muslim, as I mentioned to you, I used to play various instruments. I can tell you that it literally felt like I was under possession. I would do things that I was not able to do. I would play things that I was not able to play normally, that I wasn't able to play twice. And people, musicians may say, oh, this is the musician effect. Okay. The word genius comes from the word jinn. So, me and a brother in Egypt, I remember we were having this conversation. He's a brother that knew Jimi Hendrix. He knew a lot of people. He's an old school musician. And he said, me and him were playing around talking about the word genius and stuff like this. He said, you know, he said, when we say, when we think about the word genius, we used to say, we used to think about that person has that gin. He got that gin. Reflect on this. People like Jimi Hendrix, and he's, he was not able to play without being under a substance, being high, without being high. So we know even from a scholarly point of view, what do the scholars mention about people that get high and things like this? You make yourself open to what? The gin. Every musician that is on the highest level, think about it. Many of them are doing drugs and alcohol to get them to that level. You can't escape it. You, can, you might as well, if you don't want to be involved with drugs and alcohol or listening to someone that is involved in those things, you might as well take all, all of your CDs and everything and just throw it out. Because this is what the people that you're listening to, this is what they're involved in, many of them. Getting high, alcohol, and as you mentioned, Islam clearly clarifies and make clear, makes clear the position on those things. So, and when we're talking about soul music, what is people have people listened to these terms? Soul music. This is something coming from someone's soul. So what state is that person in when they're relaying that relaying those lyrics to you? Or when they were singing that song, what state was the soul in? Because you, you may start to feel the way that person was feeling. You understand? This is a serious thing. Mm -hmm. This is a spiritual thing you're talking about. That's why they know it. They call it soul music. Yeah. They say they throw terms out. This is magic in the making. Okay, what magic are you talking about? The heart itself is searching for the truth, sometimes without the individual realizing. But what happens is that we become so busy, and I was just having this conversa conversation with another brother um, about how shaitan makes us so busy in our lives. You know, whether it be with music, once again, movies, you're watching, you know, people that are glued to the TV, literally becoming a zombie. We become so busy in our lifestyle that we don't realize the heart is literally screaming out. It's screaming for guidance. Um, so the difference between my heart then and now is, is no comparison. I'm telling you, like anyone that knew me before and knows me now, they see a big difference, you know, and, it's, and this is not to brag about myself or anything, but this is this, this is the calmness and the peace that I have with the law, subhanahu wa ta'ala, today. It's, it's, it's a big difference, and I, can, I can't say enough to be grateful, you know. I can't say enough to thank Allah, honestly, man. I mean, I think about it every day how Allah literally took me away from that environment I was around. Literally, if I wanted to right now, you know, I, I'm someone that can go right back to what I was doing again. And, and literally with all this technology today and make millions of dollars without a record label, you know. It's, it's, and just talking about how it's so much easier to do those things. But I know in my heart, so, so the, those things are temporary enjoyments and they're going to do nothing but destroy me. It's as simple as that. To simplify, it's going to absolutely destroy me. And that's what I was on, a path of destruction, without a doubt. Without a doubt. The statement of Ibn Al-Qayyim Jawziyyah, Rahimahullah, he mentioned that the Qur'an and music can, it can't be in the same heart at the same time. You can't love music and love the Qur'an at the same time. They're, 
they're going to be at war with one another. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a hindrance. You know, you may not, a person may not feel the same when they're reciting in the Salah. It's a big difference. You know, it, it, may, it may make you hate listening to lectures and things like that. A person that's addicted to music, you know, when a person is dying, they may be singing a song instead of re reciting the Kelima. It's very dangerous, very dangerous. So why take a chance? Why take a chance on something? And it's something when, you know, we know, I know that it's definitely a trial without, without a doubt. It's more addictive than probably drinking alcohol or it's more addictive than, than, uh, than, than trying to get away from smoking cigarettes and things like that. It's, it's more addictive than that, I believe it. So it's a step-by-step -step process. No one's gonna probably get rid of it all, all, you know, you know, all at once, but take the steps necessary. Show Allah that you know that you are at least taking the steps. You know, you know, uh, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. So, and 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 most importantly, I would say with that is to ask Allah to assist us when we have those yeah. addictions. Ask, just ask Allah. Ask your Creator to assist you. Ask Allah for guidance. Even if we're a non-Muslim, for example, the best thing we can do is ask the Creator of the heavens and earth. You don't, if you, even if you don't believe that the Creator exists, say, Oh God. Guide me to that way which you are pleased with. Guide me to your way. Without a doubt, Allah is going to guide you to Islam. The Creator is going to guide you to Islam. If that person sincerely asks the Creator of the heavens and earth to guide them, He will guide them. Mm -hmm. So uh, likewise, if a person sincerely asks Allah to guide them away from music, they will, without a doubt, Allah will assist them. Allah will show them a better way. In this society, um, uh, being a virgin is frowned upon. Why? It's because of what the people are listening to, what they're being conditioned with. They are being dumbed down. So, I mean, they're turning into zombies. Um, so when you have these type of songs, they're still calling the youth to the disobedience of Allah. Where the, where the, where the children, the youth are starting to be very disrespectful to the parents. And the parents don't understand why. Have you, have you examined what, what they're allowed to listen to? What do you allow them to listen to? So, and I'll just, just a quick question. And everyone has the question this, if you listen to music, if a person listens to music, ask them how many verses of the Quran have they memorized? Is the Quran difficult for them to memorize? If so, then you know why. Then you know why. I met people in Egypt, Brother Eddie, and there was a brother listening to music. He was addicted to it. I saw he was addicted to it. And I asked him how many verses of the Quran had he memorized? How many surahs? He had memorized, and you keep in mind that you have many people that have memorized the Quran in Egypt. This brother had memorized four surahs his whole life. Mm -hmm. And he told me, I said, I said, have you been listening to music since you were a child? He said, yes, I've been listening, doing this, listening to it. And I, he said, I'm addicted to it. You know, I said, this is the reason. This is the reason. Mm -hmm. So anyone that has that same problem, look at, just look at the opposite, the Quran, and see how, how much time you spend with the Quran. And you'll see that shaitan is trying to take you away from Allah.